Hey everyone, Robin here again for postprofessionals.de. In this episode, we want to talk about an import feature that I personally have rarely seen mentioned before. And though I'm sure everyone will have seen it at some point or another, many may never have really known what it's for. Namely, the ability to use finder tags upon importing footage into Final Cut. And even though it's actually a very powerful and also completely unique feature to Final Cut, I think it may be overlooked a lot since its use is possibly not quite so obvious. But also because a lot of people might not even ever use finder tags to begin with, in which case there's little point. But the organizational use is actually pretty ingenious. That is, if you know how to go about it. Oh, and if in the end you find this or any of my other videos helpful, do hit the thumbs up and maybe even the subscription button plus notifications to help out the channel. Doesn't cost you a cent and in most cases is completely painless. Anywho, let's check out finder tags. So which option am I talking about? Well, if we open up the good old Final Cut Pro Unified Import window, as it's called, in the sidebar with all the import options under keywords, we have two very helpful options to select from. The second one probably being one that everyone has used at some point or another, namely to automatically create keyword collections from the names from the folder or folders in which my media resides upon import. And above that, we see what we came here for, namely to do essentially the exact same thing, only using any and all finder tags that may have been assigned to the media. In other words, if I'm working with at least macOS 10.9, also known as Mavericks, or above, which I'm just going to assume everyone is, and I've assigned one or more finder tags in advance to my media, then these, as with from folders, will create keyword collections of the same name with the respective media in them. But then maybe you've never even heard of finder tags or you've heard of them, but never really known how to use them and why. And with that, never realized what a brilliant organizational tool you're missing out on. So let's take a quick look at them in the finder. I've just placed the folder with the media from my German language Final Cut training onto my desktop. And any media I want to tag can't of course be on a disk or volume that I can't write to. Assuming they haven't been deactivated in the finder preferences, you can find a list of the top 10 or so finder tags currently available to you in the sidebar at the bottom left of any finder window. And as of macOS 10.9 Mavericks, these have become extremely customizable and far more useful beyond just color coding. You can add as many new ones as you like, sort them manually, edit them, or even remove them entirely. You can apply them to any given file via a simple drag and drop, or even with the tag menu in any Finder Windows toolbar, or even from within any save dialog box as you're saving a file. You can even ask Siri to show you any files with a particular tag. I found one file tagged orange. To see if any files are tagged with any particular tag, I simply need to select it, after which any and all tagged files are displayed on the right. So really the whole principle behind it all is effectively the same as what we know from working with keywords in Final Cut Pro. If I click on all tags at the bottom, I'm shown all of the tags available to me, so any tags that don't already fit into the list above. For example, those that have downloaded the media included in my Final Cut online training should see at least two additional tags listed above and beyond the standard set, namely Impressionen and Interview. Since I in fact tagged some of the media before putting it online, and these are automatically recognized by macOS 10 and added to the list no matter where they are located on my computer. So if we, for example, select the interview tag, we see four interview clips listed that I use in my training. But if I go back to the top level of the folder that they're in, I can see that the four clips that were listed are actually organized in separate folders on the finder level, namely in the folders Stella and Benjamin. How this becomes relevant in Final Cut Pro later on and how this works out to being a brilliant and very unique organizational tool specifically for Final Cut is what we wanna look at. But before I do that, I just want to tag some additional clips, specifically the numbered clips at the top that haven't been placed into a folder of any kind. These are all clips that were captured from a computer voice synthesizer. I'll just right click the first clip and choose tags. 
And in the pop-up window that appears, I can either select an existing tag from the list or enter any one I like in the text field above. And just to keep things simple, I'll go for a new tag and enter voice and return. Now I could just as well continue entering further tags or even add additional tags from the list, but I don't need that, so I'll just hit return again to close the window. With that, again, as in Final Cut, we see the new tag appear on the left. And of course, if I select it, I'm shown the one clip that I've tagged so far. But I want to go back and tag the remaining clips as well. I could do this using the right-click contextual menu again, select them, and use the tag button in the toolbar, etc. But the easiest way is to simply drag and drop them onto my voice tag. Doing that tags them with the voice tag all the same. If I want, I can also right-click the tag itself and rename it, remove it from the sidebar, or even delete it altogether, as well as change its color. Something that is immediately reflected in the files that have been tagged with the particular tag. I personally just miss not being able to use a custom color. Oh well. Again, I could continue dragging the same files onto as many additional tags that I like, which will be reflected next to the file's name with up to three different colored badges. My audio files, on the other hand, are all sorted into the same folder, which could already be perfectly fine, but what if I want to further differentiate the individual files from each other and don't want to have to create an additional folder level? Well, I can just use finer tags, of course. I'll simply tag the music file with a music tag and the audio for the interview with the interview tag. And after all that, I can now finally return to the Final Cut import window. Here, I'll just navigate to the folder with my footage, select everything with Command A, simply make sure that keywords for both folders and finder tags are selected, and click Import. After the window closes, I can see my footage in the event and can click the disclosure triangle next to the event to disclose the list of keywords that were automatically generated upon import. And as we can see, even though the clips with the computer voice were not in a folder, thanks to my using finder tags, I still find them here in their own dedicated voice keyword collection. And of course, as planned, I can not only find all of my audio in an audio keyword collection, since that was the name of the folder that they were in, but I also find the audio file for the interview under the interview keyword, as well as the two clips that I tagged as such. Okay, so that in itself is already pretty helpful and again, a unique feature of Final Cut Pro 10. But the whole thing actually goes even further because all the metadata that I add to a clip in Final Cut from here on in, for example, additional keywords, favorites, or the likes, stay in Final Cut or rather in that one library. But I can in fact do it the other way around too, meaning I can have said keywords and other metadata applied to the actual media in the finder as finder tags, although only with the help of an additional little app. That little app is called FinderCat and is from the guys at Intelligent Assistance, the makers of apps such as 7 to x Producer's Best Friend, and more, and is available through the App Store. I've provided a link to it in the description if you're interested in trying it out. It's available as a standard version, as well as there being a pro version through an in-app purchase that unlocks even more possibilities. Enough, in fact, to turn your finder into a covert media asset management system specifically suited for Final Cut Pro. In other words, if I want to preserve all the meticulous work I've put into assigning keywords and the likes on a clip level, then all I have to do is drag the library or the event containing said information from the sidebar onto either the Finder Cat icon in the dock or onto its window. And after a short analysis, I'm presented with a list of keywords that Finder Cat has recognized, each of which I can choose to exclude or include with the checkbox in front of it or even deactivate all and then activate individual keywords as needed. Once finished, all I have to do is click Add Keyword Tags. And I get a confirmation of how many keywords were applied to how many files. Of course, with that, re-importing the same media with the finer tag option enabled will return the same organizational structure to Final Cut, which in itself is already a great thing to have. But where I see by far the most potential for it being of huge interest and use for a lot of people that otherwise might not do much media management on the finder level is in the pro version. Because with it, aside from obviously also applying keyword collections as finder tags, it also recognizes all the various other information and parameters that have been embedded into my media, namely any and all keyword ranges that I've assigned, 
video and audio role assignments, any notes I may have entered for a clip, markers and chapter markers, both favorite and rejected ranges of a clip, and even changes of video transformations, crop, stabilization, as well as volume, loudness, and a slew of other parameters. Yes, it will embed all of the said information into the media on the finder level. In fact, all of this information is already embedded in the file even with the standard version, but you can only recover that information using the pro version of FinderCat. Just to demonstrate this with a few simple examples, I've imported five clips from my desktop that don't have any type of tagging so far. Something I can see if I look at them in list view with the tags column enabled. As we can see, we see nothing. In Final Cut Pro, I've assigned the keywords interview and Benjamin to the entire interview clip, but it could just as well be a range-based keyword, so only a section of the clip that's keyworded. And since this is a classic interview clip, it has four questions, or rather answers, that I've favorited, as we can see by the little green bar. As well as a pre and post role, which could just as well be slates, which I have tagged as rejected, which we can see here represented as red bars. Add to that, just for good measure, I set a marker at the beginning of each favorited range and renamed the ranges to identify them as the individual answers. To top it all off, I've entered a rough description of the clip into the clip's notes field. And last but not least, I've changed the audio configuration of the interview clip from stereo to dual mono and deactivated one of the two channels. The other four, I've simply assigned a B-roll keyword. And for demonstration purposes, I've also opened three of the clips and resized and repositioned each randomly. <laughs> Not that I can think of any practical reason why anyone would want to do this, but again, it's just for demonstration purposes to show you that this information too, should you actually need it, is in fact also something included when the clip is run through FinderCat and is embedded into the media as well. And as a visual reference, I'll simply assign the music audio roll to the last clip. Okay, so with all that out of the way, I now just need to open FinderCat and drag either my library or individual event onto its window. Again, get the list of keywords about to be applied and simply click Add Keyword Tags. After getting the confirmation, I can recheck the files in the Finder and see that the aforementioned keywords have now in fact been applied as Finder Tags. And just to show you the difference between what I get between importing through FinderCat Pro as opposed to when I just import the clips through the regular import window with the Finder tag option active, I'll do the latter into this one library. And I see that I've at least retained the keywords that I had previously applied to the clips. So in the case of the standard version, its utility stops after having applied the keywords to the media in the Finder. But to import the same clips into this third library, I'll drag them onto the open FinderCat Pro window, which is, of course, the key to getting this to work. And again, after a short analysis, I just need to click Send to Final Cut Pro 10, select the library I want to send the import to, the window closes, and I'm given the imported clips in a new event. And in list view, if I select my interview clip, we can see that everything in terms of keywords, even range-based keywords, favorites and rejected ranges, as well as the markers and even the notes that I entered have been preserved perfectly. And if I go into the audio inspector for the clip, I see that my audio configuration settings have been preserved as well. It's set to dual mono and one channel is deactivated. To top it all off, even the renaming of any favorite ranges, markers, etc., are all there. And if I select any of the other clips, you'll see that not only the keywords, but even the transformations I applied inside the clip were retained and we can easily tell by its green color that the one clip also retained the music audio role that I assigned. And again, even if you don't have the pro version of FinderCat, all this information is embedded in the file no matter what. So even if you were to start out just using the standard version, upgrading to the pro version later on will make favorite ranges, etc., of previously processed clips magically appear once you use the pro version to import them. So that's pretty cool if you ask me. Just imagine using this in a collaborative environment. For example, when processing media for the first time from or to a disk or server. So basically, media that more than one person will be accessing, you just have to do the work once and everyone working with the same media and Finder Cat will benefit from it. Or even if you import the same media into a different project at a later date. 
and all that without needing access to the original library. Again, whether embedding transformations is practical is up to you to decide, but having things like the audio configuration and favorites retained, if you ask me, is certainly a very cool option to have. Add up all the hours of work you could potentially be saving yourself and others, and the already minor cost of Finder Cat will, in my opinion, have paid for itself in no time. So there you go, the, I hope, surprisingly powerful Finder tags in the context of Final Cut Pro. And how about you? Have you already been using Finder tags and all of this is just old news to you? Or do you think you'll start using them even more in the future? And what do you think of Finder Cat? Let me know down in the comments, I'd love to hear from you. And of course, while you're down there, if you liked what you saw, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. It really helps the channel. In which case, thank you for your support. Be sure to check out the description for infos and links such as the one to Finder Cat. Thanks for watching and hope to see you the next time. Take care.